Hey guys, in this video we're going to cover the basics of cryptography before we actually start writing our code. We're going to learn how we can encrypt and decrypt messages and what's the difference between codes and ciphers. We're then also going to use a simple cipher called Caesar cipher to decrypt and encrypt messages. So what is cryptography actually? Historically, anyone who needed to share sensitive information, for example spies, soldiers or hackers, relied on cryptography to make sure the secret stayed secret. So cryptography is the science of using secret codes. Here's an example of two different pieces of texts. The message on the left is a secret message that has been encrypted, and the message on the right is random gibberish. Encryption keeps a message secret from other people who cannot decipher it, even if they get their hands on the message. Unlike ciphers, codes are made to be understandable and publicly available. Codes substitute messages with symbols that anyone should be able to look up to translate into a message. One example of codes is Morse code, which was frequently used in the early 19th century when electric telegraphs were invented. So to convert letters of the alphabet to Morse code, you need a certain system. And that part is called encoding. And then the process of translating electric pulses to English when a message is received is called decoding. In contrast with codes, ciphers are specific kind of codes which are used to keep messages secret. We can use a cipher to turn understandable English text, plain text, into gibberish that hides a secret message, which is called the ciphertext. So a cipher is a set of rules for converting between plain text and ciphertext. And one very famous cipher is Caesar cipher, which is named after Julius Caesar, who used it 2000 years ago. Caesar cipher works by substituting each letter of a message with a new letter after shifting the alphabet over. So for example, Caesar substituted letters in his messages by shifting the letters in the alphabet down by three and then replacing every letter with a letter in his shifted alphabet. So for example, every A in a message would be replaced by a D, every B would be an E and so on. And to make converting plain text to ciphertext easier, there's something called a cipher wheel. The cipher wheel consists of two rings of letters. Each ring is split up into 26 slots for each letter in the alphabet, and the outer ring represents the plain text alphabet, and the inner ring represents the corresponding letters in the ciphertext. So to use the cipher wheel to encrypt our message, we would first write down our message in plain text. Next, we would spin the inner wheel of the cipher wheel until its slot matches up with the slots in the outer wheel. And this helps us convert the original message in plain text to the encrypted message by using the cipher. Now, to decrypt a message from ciphertext to plain text, we would start with the inner wheel and then move to the outer wheel. In order to do that, you need to know the key. So for example, 15, which means each letter would be offset by 15 positions. And then you can decrypt the message using the cipher wheel. Let's put working with Caesar cipher into practice. And to find those practice questions, you can switch over to inventwithpython.com. The link is also in the description down below. So taking what we just learned, we should go ahead and first encrypt a couple of different messages with different keys. So for instance, here with key four, we're going to encrypt ambidextrous, able to pick with equal skill a right hand pocket or a left. If we take a look at a cipher wheel, we can start out with the first letter, A, and then we can apply the key, four. And if we want to encrypt a code, we would move forward in the alphabet. So that means we start from the letter A and we go forward four letters, so one, two, three, four, and we wouldn't end up with a letter E. Now the second letter in our word is M, and again we would apply key four, so we go forward, one, two, three, four, so the second letter is gonna be Q. So the first two letters encrypted with Caesar cipher with key four would be E, Q, and of course we could continue doing that for all the different letters here, but there are also some calculators online that we can use that save us quite a bit of time. So to do that, let's just copy this sentence here. And if we head over to a Caesar cipher converter, link in the description down below, we can simply copy and paste that text here. And then we can select if we want to encode or decode that particular sentence. And we need to provide the key. So in our case four, and then we press calculate, and then we can see the result here on the right side. And we can see the first two letters, E and Q, are exactly what we identified on the cipher wheel. So let's double check that this is actually the correct result. For that, we can copy this result here, then select decode instead with, of course, the key four. 
And now once we enter the encrypted message, we should actually get back the original message. And this is exactly what's displayed here. Of course, we can do the same with the second sentence. In this case, we should apply a key of 17. So if we copy that, paste it in here and apply a key of 17 and encode the message, then we get this encrypted text back. And finally, we should encrypt this message here with key 21. So again, we're gonna select our key 21, encode and paste in our text. And as we click calculate, we are going to see the result here. Now the second question is going to be a little bit more interesting because we start out with an encrypted message and we are going to decrypt it. So here we have the following ciphertext and this ciphertext here is encrypted with key 15. So this is quite cryptic, but of course we can head over, select our text, we need to select our key 15 and in this case we want to decode the message. And then we can see the result is this, killed, a costume sometimes worn by Scotchmen in America and Americans in Scotland. And then of course we have a second message that we can decrypt this time with key four. So again, we're going to select decode a key of four and we can type in our text. And once we click on calculate, we can see this is the result, imposter arrival aspirant to public honors. The next question asks us to encrypt the following sentence with key zero. And the text is, this is a silly example. Now the sentence already tells us something. Because if we look back at our cipher wheel and we start with the word this, for instance, if we apply a key of zero, then of course we would start with the letter T and move zero letters forward in the alphabet. So we still have the T and the same is true with all the other letters. So basically the sentence will not be encrypted because with a key of zero, we don't shift the actual numbers. And we can also see that in our converter. So if we enter the text here, we select a key of zero and we select encode and click on calculate we get back the exact same sentence. Now next we are giving a word in plain text and a word in ciphertext, and we should figure out which key has been used to encrypt a word. And the first word here is rosebud, and this is the encrypted word in ciphertext. Now the only thing we need to figure out actually is the key. So we start with the letter R, and we need to figure out how many letter positions we have to shift R forward to get to L. So let's have a look at our cipher wheel. So we start with letter R and since we are encrypting the message, we need to go forward. If we would decrypt, of course, we would go backward. So in this case here, we start with letter R and we have to get all the way to L. So let's count how many positions it takes to get from R to L on our cipher wheel. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. So that means a key of 20 should have been applied. And to double check that, we can copy the plain text word into our cipher converter, enter a key of 20 and select encode. And when we click on calculate, we should get back the exact same word as displayed here, which of course is the case. Now if you repeat the same steps for the second word here, so we need to switch from Y to P. We can look at our cipher wheel and we can see we need to switch from Y to P. And these are 17 positions. So again, we can type this word into our converter, select encode and enter a key of 17 and we get back this result, which of course matches our ciphertext here. And finally, we have the word astronomy, which is turned into this word in ciphertext. So we need to switch from A to H and checking on our cipher wheel, these are seven characters from A to H. So let's double check in our cipher converter with a key of seven and we get back this word here, which again, of course, matches our ciphertext. Now for the final question, we have a sentence that has been encrypted with key eight, and it looks like this. And the question is, what is actually the result if we try to decrypt it with a wrong key? So in this case, with a key of nine instead of eight. And just to double check, here is the encrypted ciphertext, and let's just decode it with the correct key, so with a key of eight. So here we can see this is a proper result, meekness, uncommon patience, and planning a revenge that's worthwhile. But now the actual question is to decode it with a key of nine rather than eight. And if we do that, so if we change the key to nine rather than eight and we click on decode, then we get this result here. So if we try to decode a message with the wrong key, then of course we get back gibberish. We need to know the correct key to decrypt the message. Caesar ciphers and other ciphers were used to encrypt messages for several hundred years. But especially if we have a long message, it can take very long to do that by hand. And for this, we can of course write a program, which makes it a lot easier to encrypt a message. Now we learned about the basics of cryptography, what the difference between codes and ciphers are, 
and we had a specific look at Caesar Cipher. With this foundation in place, we are going to start programming in the next video. Feel free to subscribe to the channel to stay up to date about any new video. Like the video if you find it helpful and see you guys in the next video.